Hi. So, when was your last sex? <laughs> This morning? Last night? Three months ago? A year? Okay. Um, did you enjoy it? Or you were staring at the clock and thinking of your to-do list? Okay, I remember mine because I have a sex diary. I believe the power to transform yourself lies in sex diary. But before I share the secret power of sex diary, let me bring you back where this whole idea come from. When I was 18, I did what most people do. I bet you all have a lot of options for your first job. But I didn't. Because I was 18, I'm disabled, I have no job opportunities at all. It was so common that people with disability have no job. So that's why my parents and my friends, they, it's okay, because actually at the back of their mind, they think, you know, you will end up to become a notable spinster like Jane Austen. <laughs> so I tried really hard to send a lot of applications and I got nothing. But actually, I don't worry because I have a secret job with a mystery phone. I was working at the sex call center. <laughs> And my call name is Suga. <laughs> so. <laughs> as Suga, as Suga, I have hundreds of callers. Lawyers, accountants, teachers, <laughs> father to be, and sometimes women. Um, sometimes we flirt, sometimes we have pillow talks, but most of the time they were talking about their stories and concerns. Stories like uncertainty before their wedding day, casual sex, having an affair with a married colleague, and there's so many, and I couldn't remember that all. For the record, I like, I'm having like 13 Michaels and three Andys. I'm sorry if anyone calls Andy or Michael, okay? I'm sorry. But it was so difficult to remember their backgrounds and their stories. So I invented um, a caller directory. So every time they call, I'll just check it out, okay? So over the decades, um, from working in the sex call center, to talking to people from online apps. I listen to thousands of stories. I listen to exhibitionists, swing couples, and people with really different sexual preferences and interests. Usually, they start by self-criticizing themselves, feeling so guilty. But the more I listen to them and accept them, and they feel so happy and they accept them, their own identities, and they will move on to live a life with no more guilt and no more troubles. But, you know, no matter how I try to accept them and support them, but when I step up and I disclose my disabilities, they told me I am a liar. They never call again. You see, I try so hard to accept them. I accepted them but no one accepted me. So I come up with an idea to write to myself in a diary. Being as Suga, I interact with others and have an access to know all sorts of ideas about sexuality, intimacy, and fetishes. So in my diary, I can write whatever I like. At that time, sex diary is a way I embrace myself. Around 2015, when I was work studying my Master of Social Work, I started to fight for sex rights for people with disability. I go to a lot of public seminars and I talk to medias. The most common questions that I encounter is, how do you do it? It's like a novelty seeking. They dismiss my sexuality, not only because I'm disabled, but also because I'm a woman. So one day, 
I came across a very important quote from Robert McKee, the founder of Story from Forum. He says, storytelling is the most powerful way to put ideas into the world today. So instead of lecturing people, I decided to make use of my sex diary, and I come up with a new writing project called Sugar Triple X Stories. A lot of readers, after this book published, a lot of readers come to share their stories with me. One of the widower wrote to me, he said, Sugar's story reminded me my late wife. She died of cancer. I miss her so much, I love her, and I take good care of her at that time. But I just don't know how to hug her, kiss her, especially when she was so sick in the hospital bed. Now I've decided to write my sex diary. From the time I met her, I will re-experience the dating, the proposal, the wedding day, everything. This time I have the second chance to kiss her and love her and do whatever that I won't regret again. I will grieve again, but this time I'm not going to be alone. So you can see a lot of readers have that special connection with Suga's stories. And they don't need to read my book because they start writing their own sex diary. So basically for three main reasons. Reason one, sex diary is a sex discovery channel. I wrote all sorts of details about my sex experience, what I did and how I felt. Ladies and gentlemen, it's very important that you do your homework, no matter how old are you especially on self-pleasuring and sex experience with others. You see, we are not a gold mine waiting for someone to explore you sexually and bring you to the big O. <laughs> it's important that sex is actually like sports. According to Master and Johnson's studies, Women's sexual physical experience and their responses are increased muscle tensions, increase of heart pressure, um, blood rate, uh, your eyes dilate and you, you start sweating. The only differences between sex and sports is the activation of your sex organs, okay? So actually everyone can be your own best coach. A research study comparing women, women uh, who masturbate to those who don't, masturbators have more sex satisfactory. They have more sexual desire. They have higher self-esteem. They have more satisfaction in their relationships. And they require less time for sexual arousal. So, it's very important that actually the sex diary helps you to make a record of how you can turn on your sex engine. But I can tell you, sex diary is much more related to your sexual identity, especially when you are in challenges. So, reason two, sex diary is a storybook that helps you to think out of the box. You see, I read my sex diary like a storybook. Every time I think if you were not yourself in that situation, maybe you can give good advice to yourself. So let me give you an example. A few years ago, when I was having my job appraisal meeting, my ex-boss advised me that I am being too fat and I don't look presentable. It was very defeating because they don't see my hard work. They judge me by how I look. And since then, I wear really gigantic T-shirt to cover my body. I mean, I wear like a hip-hop girl, but I don't dance. <laughs> and my girlfriend hates me because I wear something like that in her wedding. <laughs> so 
I stopped wearing makeup, no more haircut, no more dress, I'm not seeing my friends, and no more dating. So it's like living in a black hole. So one day I decided I turned to my storybook and I think what Suga would say. So she says to me, she say, when you are 18, you are pretty, you're skinny, but because of that, you think that you deserve a man with really good competence. So you always pick on your boyfriends. I mean, they're not tall enough, they're not smart enough, and then they're not strong enough. And you don't see how much they love you, and you don't see how hard they try. So as a result, they just leave you, and now you're alone. But when you grow older, yes, you are chubby, but you don't need a push-up bra at all. Yeah, okay, but the problem is it's not about you being unable to fit in a tight dress. The problem is not about you. The problem is about the dress. All you need to do is to find something to wear and make you feel confident. So today, here I am. Actually, this is <laughs> my diary, made me. But I can tell you, I can tell you, it's not only about helping you to overcome your challenges, it's more related to your future. So, number three, sex diary is a chamber of imagination. Your sex diary doesn't have to be all real facts. It can be your desire and imagination. I'm not sure how many of you have a sex bucket list, Okay, a reader with a brittle bone disease shared her list with me. Okay, the t one of the top three items was bondage. She talked to her uh, the doctors, she talked to the professional of the bondage, and she decided she doesn't want to do it. She doesn't want to take the risk. But she really wanted to put a tick on her item list. So I decided, I say, why don't we write an imaginary stories in your diary? So we work together on the first draft, and then she carries on to revise it. At the end of the final version, she wrote, my bone was so fragile that it will not be a cage of my free soul. With her consent, we make adaptation and we share the story with a couple more girls with disabilities. For her, it was a testimony of she, who she really was. For her readers, it's an inspiration to let us think how we are being trapped in our comfort zone and how we are stigmatizing ourselves. So Sex Diary actually it's a Bible of love to me. If you're interested to start writing your diary, here's three tips. Number one, be really honest to yourself. No one will judge you. Number two, number two is ask questions. Thank you, everyone. Ask questions to yourself, like me. I ask a lot of questions to Suga, and she always blows my mind. Number three, <laughs> number three, share if you feel comfortable, because it's not only about your testimony, it's an inspiration for everybody. So I can tell you that sex diary helps me a lot because it's discovered myself, it helps me to overcome my challenges, and it gives me a place to dream and share. So I think it's time for you guys to write your own sex diary, because, see, no one will set you free from your own comfort zone. Your liberation starts when you write. Thank you.